processes in the state do not necessarily have any bearing on what we're doing uh, this evening. Uh, why we started Iowa is very simple. We're not supposed to pick the next president of the United States. Okay, I hear that all the time. Well, Iowa's not very predictive. We're not supposed to be. If we were predictive, why would we need 55 other contests in order to determine who our uh, nominee is? We are supposed to provide a framework, a neutral framework. That's why I'm neutral in the process and why our governing board is uh, neutral in the process. In order for candidates to come here and declare themselves uh, candidates for President of the United States in pretty reasonably priced media markets in order for them to actually run for president. And then through all of you and your reporting on them and through any advertisements, anything else they do, then they throw their hat in the ring and do that. That's what Iowa is supposed to do. Nothing more, nothing less. 43% of the time, the winner of the Iowa caucuses has become the nominee for the Republican Party. But if tonight the candidates here believe that they have had a fair process, they have been heard, and I think every one of the candidates will, will tell you that in terms, of their, uh, in terms of their relationship with the Republican Party of Iowa, then we will have done our job before any votes even come in. So I want to make sure I correct that very, very clearly, that we are not supposed to do that. I know sometimes other states get a little carried away. We're the ones that pick the president. That, that's, that's not what the carve-out system is all about. The carve-out system is to kick off a system with 56 different contests. So I wanted to say that uh, first. Second of all, I want to talk about the transparency of our, pro of our process. You will find no other place in the entire country, I don't mean that as a metaphor, that is more transparent than what's going to happen here tonight. You won't find anything more transparent than what's going to happen here tonight. The votes are counted in front of the crowd that casts the votes. Those votes are reported either via app or via a, uh, a, a phone in front of the people that cast their votes. Candidates can have someone watch that process of counting and watch that process. And if that's not enough for you, after we put that up on the board, and I'm sure all of you are going to be checking out our website, the people that are still sitting in that precinct caucus can check to make sure what they voted on and witness the counting and what they, uh, and what they witnessed in terms of putting on our app they can actually see it reported. And then if that's not enough for you, we have a paper trail of the schedules of where those votes are counted, and we pick up those votes and the, and the hard copies, and we save them, and we try to do that. And, you know, sometimes there's a reason to do that faster, but typically we give ourselves 48 hours to pick up every single one of them, 1,657. So there is, there is... I'm not going to come back out here later on tonight and declare a winner. I don't have to. All of you are going to see exactly what I see. There is not one single thing that I see that the press is not going to see. So that's the process that we have tonight. We're very proud of that particular process. I think starting out everything like Iowa does, I think it needs to be like that. I think it needs to be that transparent. So I, those, are the, those are the two things I wanted to say most of all. I'm excited about tonight. I think you're going to see Iowa step forward. Uh, we've got some cold temperatures, but this will not be the first uh, sub-zero uh, evening that we have in the state of Iowa in the winter, I'll guarantee you. That we're very, very used to this kind of thing. And uh, thank goodness uh, we're not going to have uh, whiteouts or blizzard-like conditions. And We've also had our great... Uh, work, road workers have almost two days to clear things out. So we're really excited. But 1,657 precincts, is, uh, the, and that's who's going to report, and you're going to see every one of them broken out, triple, quadruple checked for the accuracy of those numbers. So, I, again, you, you probably already know all the Caucus 101. I'd be happy to uh, take any questions if you have any. Well, that's really interesting to see, however. Oh, they can come on up. Okay, bring the mic to him, yeah. What's your response to, you know, if perhaps a candidate denies the results of the caucus tonight or, um, you know, disputes any of the results? What, um, what would you say to that? Well, if it's, a, if, it's, if it's what candidates are saying, I have no control over that. But what I do have control over is the process. It will be impossible for a candidate uh, uh, to question a process as transparent as us because every single person in the world can see what I see and can look at the paper trail. So that what I'm in charge of, what I'm responsible for as the Republican Party of Iowa chair 
is the process, and that uh, and that process is as transparent as anything in the country. Um, <clears throat> yesterday, you had said that your optimism about turnout tonight had rebounded. You alluded to that uh, just a few minutes ago as well. Could you give a an, an update on the number that you're expecting tonight? Well, I'm not going to give a, speci a specific number. That's how I get myself in trouble. But the the record is 186,000. You all know that. I'm sure, and I, I had said earlier uh, before the weather conditions that I, I think the environment, this environment still does, honestly, uh, right now, this environment still feels like 2016 when we had a very competitive election, and obviously that's when we set the record. Um, you know, I, I, I'm thinking that uh, I, it would be hard to set that record, but I do think we're going to have a very, very robust turnout for, uh, for sub-zero uh, temperatures. So I still feel very, very good. I think the one thing that's missing, and this isn't denigrating anybody's reporting or anything like that, but I really think sometimes, especially if I'm getting reports from New York and California and places that may have never been to Iowa, I, I really think people are grossly underestimating how many sub-zero evenings we have and how many of these farmers have to go out and tend to their livestock and dig themselves out in order to get to work. This is not, this is not an unheard of situation that we have. Now, I am glad it didn't, we didn't have the caucus two, uh, I'm glad we didn't have the caucus two days ago. And that, that, that was some difficult stuff. But if all we have to deal with is temperatures, I mean, you're gonna see all the numbers here before the end of the, uh, the evening. Uh, and so in that particular case, we'll see if I'm correct. But I've got a, quite a bit of optimism based on a lot of anecdotes and and, uh, and three caucuses under my belt as chair and probably four others as a participant before that. Uh, Jeff, hey, uh, how many people do you have staffing the call center if, if the app goes down? Uh, we've got, I, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk about specific uh, numbers that we have set up for things just in terms of precautionary situations because there are nefarious uh, things out here. Not you or not anybody in here, but you know what I'm saying. But we uh, just trust me in an Armageddon-like situation, uh, we have uh, plenty of staff, well-trained staff in order to carry this out and still preserve the transparency that really not just all of you, but the uh, Republican National Committee and really the rest of the country uh, deserve. Yes. Uh, thank you, Chairman, for doing this. Uh, I have a logistic question. Uh, well, uh, around what time will you announce the first tutorial uh, of the caucus, and how often will you do it in interim uh, tally? Thank you. Thank you for that question. We, we're in, in, we transmit those results to you as we receive them. Uh, we, ha we have a couple of processes in order to make sure that these, I mean, you would be extremely impressed if you saw how many double checks, triple checks, quadruple checks we have. And obviously for security reasons, I'm not gonna outline details of all of that, but just know that I've got people that have forgotten more about, <laughs> about uh, technology that are helping us right now uh, than, uh, than, than I've ever had surrounding me before. But uh, as they come in, so in a small rural county or a small rural precinct, we could very easily have results start to trickle in in 45 minutes. Uh, there's going to be other, uh, and then there's gonna be a slow trickle that I would anticipate. It will build up to a lot of, uh, a, a quite a bit of results coming in. There'll be a bit of a bottleneck there. And then we're going to, I mean, it, it might be midnight till we have every single uh, piece of data come in, but every piece of data, the first one all the way to the, uh, to the, to the 1600 plus, is going to have the, the degree of transparency and the degree of integrity that you expect. And we will track every one of them down and there will be a paper trail for every single precinct. Jeff, uh, over here, uh, you know, in terms of the divide in which for covered roads and everything like that, especially in Eastern Iowa, some of the roads are still covered. Should we expect potentially results later in that area? Would we given that expectation of have you been in touch with the Department of Transportation I'm on where maybe the problem areas are still? Sure, sure. And I, uh, my, I've, got a, I've got my little grandson out in eastern Iowa who's ninth generation in Sugar Creek Township, Cedar County, Iowa. So, we, and I, so I've got hundreds of relatives spread out all over the east. And I wouldn't just rely on that because not everybody has that. But, yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I, I'm hoping we have been 
We have been uh, asking people to get there as early as they possibly can. Our chairs uh, are going to be patient. We're a very bottom up. We're not like the Democrats that have the super delegates and has a president telling them that they're not going to be first in the nation anymore. We don't have anything like that in the Republican Party. It's all bottom up. And so all of our precinct chairs and all of our county chairs, in some ways, they run their caucuses, certainly with our suggestion, but they run their caucuses how they see fit. So I'm expecting that all of those chairs are going to be patient with people coming in. And certainly, I would rather get those results later than have anybody hurry up beyond where they feel comfortable. Have, have you heard any examples of um, precincts that had to be changed because of weather or heat going out and are there any protocols or safeguards you want to put in place for future caucuses uh, in case you do have, uh, you know, another blizzard or uh, bad weather so you know how to respond next time? Sure. Well, I think we're responding next time the way we're responding right now. Uh, we have 1,657 precincts. We have Iowans that for generations have witnessed these uh, cold temperatures. I, I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable with what, what is going on right now. Um, as far as, uh, what was the first part of that question? Closures. What was the first part of that Closures. Question? Oh, I, you know what? I, I don't know. We've had some, some locations changed, and hopefully you found them. I mean, we pronounced them to everyone. I'm not sure we've had closures based on weather. No, we have not had any closures based on weather. Anything else? Well, I, uh, I appreciate all of your interest in Iowa. I appreciate you being here. I hope you felt welcomed. I can't do anything about the weather. I know it was a little bit cold for everybody. But uh, once again, welcome to the state where you will not find any more transparency in this. And remember, this isn't New Hampshire. This isn't South Carolina. This is a party-run function. I've raised every dime the party has, and we have run this uh, on uh, uh, as a party. And so we're very, very proud of this. This is the reason why Iowa. So thank you very much. And I got to get down there to make sure everything runs smoothly. So thank you.